Thank you for taking the time to look at this video, which shows the operation of our Charpy and Izod specimen machine. Two types of machines are available, the fixed speed machine and the variable speed machine. The variable speed cutter is controlled by a variable speed motor via a thyristor. Both machines use five tip ISO cutters with easily replaceable inserts. Behind the cutter head is a micro adjustment collar for setting the initial sample size and for cutter tip wear adjustment. The samples are loaded into a special four pocket rotating fixture, thus enabling up to four specimens to be machined at the same time. This drive spindle has a variable speed which is controlled by a thyristor. We will show cutting a 16 mm square sample, although the same principle can be applied to all samples. The machining operations have been broken down into first cut, second cut, third cut and fourth cut. The rotating fixture is set with two pockets to machine first and second cuts. These have a screw point clamp and serrated anvil and two pockets set to machine third and fourth cuts. These have flat clamps and anvils. We have loaded 16 mm square samples into the two pockets and we will machine the first and second cuts. This 16 mm sample is centralized in the fixture by touch. The cutter passes very close to the fixture, so only rough centralizing is required. Loaded into the third and fourth cut pockets are dummy specimens which should be loaded into any pockets when empty to ensure there are not any loose items which may get caught in the cutter. The fixture is now loaded into the machine with the two cam stops positioned towards the top right hand corner. Do not worry about this exact position as the keyways in the fixture and the drive keys on the drive spindle will finally position the rotating fixture. The fixture is now secured on the drive spindle with a clamping collar and nut. The door is shut. The spindle speed for variable speed machine and the fixture feed rate selected for the sample being machined and the cycle button pushed. On completion of this first cut cycle, the fixture is removed and cleaned before being rotated 180 degrees and reloaded onto the drive spindle. Care must be taken in cleaning the two locating faces of the rotating fixture, the four pads on the drive spindle and the clamping collar locating face. These are important surfaces which ultimately determine the size of the specimen. Again, push the start button and the second cut has been completed. Remove the fixture from the machine and place on the special stand provided. Remove the two specimens from the first and second cut pockets and the two dummy specimens from the third and fourth pockets. Now turn the two samples through 90 degrees and secure in the third and fourth pockets. 
Note the previously machined surfaces are now the clamped faces. Secure the dummy specimens into the first and second pockets. The fixture is again secured on the fixture spindle, remembering to keep the locating face clear of debris. The cycle button is pressed to machine the third cut. When complete, the fixture is removed, cleaned and rotated 180 degrees and reclamped on the spindle to machine the fourth cut. The 10 mm square sample is now complete. We have shown a fixture set up with two specimens first and second cut pockets and two specimens third and fourth cut pockets. To speed up production, additional fixtures can be purchased. For example, a fixture can have four specimens first and second pockets and a second fixture have four specimens, third and fourth pockets. Whilst one fixture is being machined, the other fixture can be unloaded and loaded. Hence, there's no lost time for clamping the specimens into the fixture. For the clamping of round and tube specimens, serrated V-notch anvils are available for machining the first and second cuts. The third and fourth cuts use the flat clamp and flat anvil as you clamp on the flat faces already on the first and second cut machined faces. sub specimens can also be produced. The 10 mm width is machined with a normal fixture as per operations first and second cut. The samples are then transferred to a sub fixture. With a sub fixture only one specimen face is machined with each load. The sub specimen is loaded into a fixture third cut pocket. The machine thickness of the specimen when loaded into the third cut pocket is set so that equal depths of cut are taken on the third and fourth cut operations. When the third cut is complete, the specimen is removed and turned through 180 degrees and loaded into a pocket set for the fourth cut operation. The sub size specimen is now complete. Tube and pipe sub size specimens can be accommodated. Different sub size specimens can be machined. The customer advises which sub sizes and combination of fixture options they require. A typical sub-size fixture arrangement is to have two pockets set to machine size 8.75 mm third cuts and two pockets set to 7.50 mm fourth cuts. This fixture will produce 10 by 7.50 mm sub-size components. An alternative is to have one pocket set to third and fourth cut which will produce a 7.5 sub size specimen and one pocket set to third and fourth cut, which will produce a 5 mm sub size specimen. Our Charpy and Izod specimen machine is of compact design and enables test houses and laboratories to manufacture their own 10 mm square Charpy and Izod samples without having to rely on functions outside their own control such as machine shops. 